going on, fam? It's the entertainer, the motivator, the educator, Lucky Murray. I'm here at CHH now, and I got an interview, guys. Uh, I was strolling on Twitter, and this brother right here was dropping gems. So I hit him up like, yo, I get an interview. And he was like, yo, Lucky, you can. Um, and bro, You just got to call me, like, right now. <laughs> I call, Yeah, I called him, like, really, really, really good, man. And we got Mowgli, Mowgli the Iceberg. Mowgli, how are you doing today, my brother? Dude, I'm doing all right, man. It's been a very uh, restful and productive Saturday, which is always a good thing. Oh, man, man. And then the, the thing that I appreciate you, Mowgli, is the fact that, one, is that I believe your music is different than a lot of other cats in, in our scene. And I think that sometimes people in our space don't know how to, like, like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't know how to embrace your sound. Because mm. you do hip-hop, but then you do, you, you can sing as well. You do a little bit of rock, you know, yeah, you yeah. a little bit of like folk. So just talk to the people a little bit about just your sound. Because I was always interested in how do you come up with your sound? Word. So, um, well, I've been making music for like uh, almost like 11 years at this point. Um, and I, I do everything at myself. Uh, I, I've produced most of my own music. I, I work with a lot of other people now, but um yeah, I grew up listening to a really diverse palette of a lot of different things. Um, so I, th there's always been like, yeah, for me, the go-tos have always been like uh, rap and like rock and metal and like electronic music and experimental music. You know, I, I really, I love anything that's creative and anything that's authentic. Um, but recently in like the last couple of years for me, um, I just started to be a little bit more free, a little bit more open in what I, I was going to create. And there, I mean, there's definitely, you know, I can't mention this without mentioning a couple, you know, really important artists. So like, to me, watching, uh, watching like Lil Peep come up was like something to where I was like, oh, wow, like, this man is just like, he's not even rapping like he's just straight up doing this he, he's he's just straight up doing like auto tune like blink 182 and the you know the market's heating it up and i think for a long time that one of the things with me was like um trying to conform to certain barriers or certain uh categories that didn't really exist so for for a long time for me it was like okay well because i'm a quote unquote like rapper this is how i got to do a song now so it's like i can sing on a hook but then you know i got to rap on the verses like more traditional to like round it out but then you know i just started seeing hip-hop get more and more just like uh athletic and you know one of the downsides to that you know a lot of people complain about like mumble rap a lot of people complain about just like you know the purists of being like oh this isn't hip-hop but you know i think that the genre has kind of transcended into more of like an attitude and a and culture of like yeah. hip hop is like uh like just just almost like a like a culture of like free expression and it's like anything kind of just goes at this point so uh seeing those people it's like i just kind of threw the rules out the window and just started <laughs> messing around and you know i'm always trying to stay one step ahead of the curve and keep evolving myself i don't i don't like it expect that uh my sound's ever going to not continue to evolve and progress over, over time. And, and the, the one thing that, that I, I, I love about your, your sound is that you're not afraid to talk about your feelings. You're not afraid to talk about <laughs> what's going on in your head, your space. Um, one of my favorite songs from you, uh, I think you released it. I, don't, I, I forget when you released it. It was like last year, it was Black on Black. Yeah. You know, and, um, black on just, Black on Black on Black. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like, this, this guy is not afraid of, of no matter what, who, where, uh, you are going to speak about what's going on and also what's going on around you. And I, and I yeah. believe a lot of people in our space doesn't have that self-awareness, I believe. Mm. Why do you think that is the case? Um, well, I think, I think a lot of people, um, I think there's, there's a lot of people with really good hearts and really good intentions, specifically in like Christian hip hop. I think that, you know, for, for me, the, the thing that I always come down to is like, I want, like, to me, if my music isn't like really just like honest and authentic and transparent, it's not like the music that I really feel like I'm supposed to be doing. So I think a lot of people get really like mission mindset oriented. And then like, they, it's like, um, 
people can get into like putting an ideal in their music that I think it becomes a lot, it really transparent to like a third party if there's any idiosyncrasy between that ideal and the messenger, you know? So yeah. I, I think, and so like there, cause, cause there's people, I think like KB is an example, somebody that does this really well, that his music is like extremely mission focused. It's extremely like gospel oriented. Um, he's still very transparent about his shortcomings and stuff. But like, I think that, you know, you can just hear the authenticity in his music and you can you can tell that it's all real you can tell because he has that self-awareness um that this is like a guy a leg that's legitimately like in a in a really like spiritually healthy place or in a really good like uh relationship with god that's confronting his shortcomings and the things he has to deal with and you know just putting on the music i i think a lot of people aren't willing to be as brutally honest with where they're at you know, in their personal lives to have that, to have it, you know, translate. And, you know, like th there's the, the whole like musical skill side of it, you know, to, to convey that, you know, so, yeah. but sometimes I think people have the skill, but then like it's, they're, they're trying to create an ideal in their music that might be out of sync with like what their reality is. So for me, it's like, I'm just like trying to make music that's very authentic uh, with where I'm at. And like where I'm at is where I'm at. And sometimes it's like where I'm at isn't like the healthiest place. Um, but I think that depending on how I can frame that, that's something that can be very uh, powerful and very relatable to other people as well. You know, so like I'm very big on just like be honest, but be intentional with like where you want to point, you know, with with the music. So like a lot of times that there's, there's like a lot of stuff in, in my life that, might be out of sync or might uh need work on and like spiritually but like i know where i need to work on and i'm self-aware enough to like be honest about it and then like use that as an opportunity to point other people that are going through a similar thing in the direction that i know i need to head as well gotcha and, and it's very transparent not only in your music but also the people that you surround yourself with and the big collective that came out in the past few years have been any tribe uh, yeah that collective, uh, you you guys put out high horse. It set it on <laughs> fire. Uh, you was coming in your own as far as the uh, artists and everybody else was doing their own thing. At the same time, uh, no big deal. Got to deal with CMG and also one of G got to deal with Reach Records. Yeah. And it, as for a time, it seemed like any tribe was. I mean, you still guys was just pushing, but it seemed like because of the individuals and you still was doing your independent thing, it wasn't as a collective. But with no big deal. Uh, not on this label no more and he's starting to you know really push any tribe do you think the momentum is is, is going to be back on any tribe or do you let me ask you this question do you think that the momentum took a hit when those two guys decided to sign to a record label um i don't think it did i mean like i think that so i mean like i think the main thing that a lot of people see is that we just haven't put a lot of like content out collectively but um you know because e even on no big deals capital release even on rg's indie tribe release releases i mean like they they've both been like repping for that pretty hard <laughs> you know and yeah. Yeah, because of them like you know like i've gained a lot of exposure um because of their growth and audiences um you know like R rg was signed to reach when he when he rapped about having to uh um you know the tribe on the move i got the tat on my knee yeah, um yeah. <laughs> so um and like I'm the I'm kind of the guy that it keeps a lot of trap like business and statistics and mathematics and that's all kind of one of my love languages. So um, I'm kind of the guy that keeps like uh, account of all of our data and runs analysis of, of like things to do with like indie tribe as a whole, as addition to my own career. And I can say that like you know from the time that Dill and RG signed, like indie tribe has experienced like just a massive amount of growth you know when, when you factor in like the reach that all of our music has the reach that we individually have um so i like more more collaborative stuff is something that we're definitely giving a lot of more energy to right now um and especially with dylan being independent again um you know that that's that's only adding to 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 the fuel for that but i wouldn't say that like it took a hit
Gotcha. And, and I, I don't think it did. It just as a fan looking looking from the inside, I mean looking from the outside, you see the high horse wreck. You see it doing crazy numbers. You yeah, see yeah. that you, you know, people repping the indie tribe. And you see Dill get his, his record deal and you see what up RG he's still rapping, but it's like, yeah. oh man, from the from the outside it looks like, oh man, it's kinda of slowing down. But I can see your point. Well and then a lot of people also I think a lot of people initially thought that like Indie Tribe was like a moniker for like independent artists. Which, yeah, yeah. you know, for, for a period, I mean, it, it, it kind of worked that way. And for me, it still kind of works that way. But that was like, at the, from the beginning, that was never really the, uh, the, the definitive, like, basing in on that. You know, like, the, the whole concept of Indie Tribe was like, being, being independent from the world, being independent from other people's opinions. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that was like kind of, kind of the genesis of Indie Tribe there. And it just kind of works that we were independent. But... Um, but yeah, even even you know, with RG being on reach now, it's like he he's still has that independent mentality. You know, like uh, the the way he he fights for his creative ideas in like the boardrooms at Reach, that that tenacity is still there. You know, so um, I think that that did throw some people off. But and it was one of those things that like we tried to communicate it. And there's no way to communicate it to everybody, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I, I think I think the people that really try to stay up, you know. And, you know, and and I, and I agree. I just felt like I was like, man, I would have loved to see any tribe sign as a collective because what yeah. you guys bring together. I mean, you have a great individual career. What if RG has a great individual career? No big deal. Same way. But when you guys come together, it seemed like you guys add something that not too many people can touch. Uh, Christian hip hop or, or, or secular doesn't really matter. Mm. Uh, so I do like I I I I'm so happy that No Big Deal is independent because I feel like that now the indie tribe the, the it can be pushed to the to levels that I think that it should reach. You know I I, I think it's amazing. Um, but the the one thing that uh, the one thing that I do want to ask is mm-hmm. going forward. You, you mentioned it. Are we going to see more indie tribe music, more indie tribe collaborative? Are we going to see a... Yeah, a, a definitely. Hopefully, what, okay, so that's the one... De- thing that de- de- definitely, definitely, definitely. I mean, and so, I mean, there, there's just, I mean, what, so one of the things for us is that, like, more than, like, it's, I love being able to, you know, collaborate and create with my brothers, but at the same time, like, for us, the most important thing about like indie tribe for us is the relationship that we have with each other. So, you know, like I'm, I'm a lot more concerned about like with my relationship with RG and like, um, and like the friendship and the way that I'm able to support him and help build him and vice versa than the verse that he can give me for a feature or whatever, you know, and a part of the mentality with that again, from the beginning has like, it's cool to be able to leverage each other's platforms for each other. Um, but like, I've always like wanted the best opportunities for everybody, you know, like e- regardless of how that affects me. So like, you know, if, if, if Dylan got offered another like crazy deal and that meant that like, you know, like he just couldn't make music with Indie Tribe anymore, but they were willing to give him like $10 million up front. But I'm telling him to take it. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling him to do what's best for his family, for his career, for his peace, whatever that looks like. If that involves me, great. You know, but like, at least the way that I see it, like, to me, it's much more important as like a unit of like a relationship of bros that like pour, pour into each other you know, just like off of music than it is to create. But, and another like logistical challenge too is is as people's, as everybody's careers have refined and advanced, you know, like it's, it can be harder to find like common space for us to collaborate on all the time, you know? So it's like, especially if you go back and listen to like me and no big bills first stuff it's like we were much much more similar in the type of music that we made so it's like there was just way more opportunities for us on a branding purpose on a sonic purpose uh to like make music together and i think the fact that we've both like uh 
grown and matured and developed our sounds in different directions is a good thing. And part of that, part, part of the reason why that's a good thing too, is that like, we never wanted it to be in a situation where like anybody is dependent on the other, like it's indie tribe. We're independent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, like yeah, in yeah, a situation yeah. where like, I'm, I'm like, like we, ne we never wanted it to be like anybody's like anybody's little bro. You know what I'm saying? That like everybody can like have their standalone career. And when we, we spent a lot of time looking at how like other collectives have prospered and how other collectives have failed, you know? Mm -hmm. So we would much rather be the odd future collective that has ah. Frank Ocean and Tyler, the creator and Earl sweatshirt doing their own thing, even without odd future making as much music than having the G unit collab where like 50 cent just runs wild. And then Lloyd banks kind of gets left in the dust. If 50 cents not doing anything with them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 yeah and, and that makes perfect sense. I, I'm glad to, you know, talk to you and clear it up. Cause as a fan, it's like, you, you think that, Oh man, like this is how it's supposed to be but as the artist inside of the picture you know you're like nah actually we we want it to be a little differently and and you guys study and it makes a lot more sense so that way right if any tribe ain't, ain't blowing up or ain't making music mostly the iceberg can still eat versus exactly like, versus like oh if you go to a show oh we just want any tribe versus Mowgli Iceberg, what about RG? And, and shout out to Jerry Manor too, because he he's a part of the collector too. I, I yeah. did not mention his name. I don't, I don't want nobody to get mad, but you know, but but the one thing I, I do want to ask you and your expertise is this. Uh -huh. I was strolling Twitter and I mm -hmm. see that you put out this tweet and I want to read it verbatim. Okay, um, cool. Because I, I'm like, I was so curious about this, but it says okay. NL catalog generates approximately 25K yesterday on Spotify alone. It has generated over 11,000 a day every day for the last year and a half. There are 300 artists in the world making more, and you put it in the capital, capital, you capitalize that, money yeah. than that every day on Spotify. And people really want to talk about artists and not getting money. And then you said this, this last tweet. You said, if you are an artist and not making money, there are two reasons. One, you're not popular enough, sorry. And says, two, you're in a bad contract deal. Uh, very sorry. More sorry. So just talk yeah. a little bit about just just your inspiration to write that tweet because a lot of people in this space claim mm -hmm. that there is no money in streaming and there's a lot of people that are not that in the tier one they are not popular enough so just yeah. educate the people real quick about why why you chose to put that out there and what's on your heart about that well so i mean i think that th th i mean th there can be a lot of mentalities uh when you're an artist and especially now you know if you're an independent artist you're not just an artist but you're an entrepreneur um and there's a lot of mentalities that are very popular and very pervasive that are extremely detrimental and so like your own motivation your own uh uh self-esteem in your career and you know what to do about it and i mean like one i mean like there the idea that so many people think that nobody makes money on streaming is i mean it's just it's, it's criminal like it's, it's 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 just absolutely crazy and um i mean like we can break down any specific example but like so let let me uh, let me see if can i can i uh can i rotate my camera on this okay yeah, yeah so can. this is spotify for artists um and on spotify for artists you can just go and you can look up any other artist so let's bring in nf and you can see how much they're doing so wow. I can go to streams right here and I can tell that NF had five and a half million streams yesterday. And then if I can, I can go to the history and I can see since, you know, 2015, I can see what his career growth has been like. So this is like when let you down exploded. And this is like me on this like flat line next to him that basically looks like insignificant, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. but you, you can see when NF blew up like right here. And, you know, this is 2018 and he's fluctuating around 2.75, 3 million streams every single day. And we can just do a quick computation. We can do a quick, uh, quick calculation there and see that 3 million streams times, I mean, let's go from the day before, 5.49 million streams times a factor of 0 0.0043 cents per play equals $23,607.
Now, so, and this is, and this is where it gets really important though. That's what his catalog has generated. That, so that's the money that Spotify is paying to NF Incorporated. Um, but, you know, like he's not going to see all that money. Um, you know, he's got a deal, which is going to take up the mo most part. I don't know what his contracts are, but more than likely he's not, you know, more than likely he's seeing 15 to 17% of that after expenses are recouped. So already, you know, who's making most money is, it's, it's the record label, not him. But then after that, you know, he's got to pay his manager. And then after that, he's got to pay his producer or other collaborators, however much equity they have ownership in those songs. So I don't know how much, you know, let's, let's just say conservatively at the end of the day, NF gets to keep 5% of his music. That means he's still making $1,100 a day on Spotify alone, totally passively, which last time I checked wasn't too shabby, especially when you factor in that you're also going to have Apple Music, you're also going to have Amazon, you're also going to have merch sales, you're also going to have touring, you're also going to have paid sponsorships. I mean, like, if NF wanted to, he could make $50,000 off of Instagram post any day that he wanted. So, I mean, like, the money compounds the bigger that you get. Um, and the bigger that you get, you have access to, you know, more uh, tiers of revenue. So like for an independent artist that's smaller, like myself, like streaming and licensing is the bulk of my revenue. You know, I don't have a big enough audience to really make a ton of money touring um, yet. Um, I, I can make a decent amount of merchandise, but once I get to that point where I can draw two or 300 people in 50 different U.S. markets, you know, that multiplies my money exponentially. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, going to yeah. be more that I can reinvest into my career and that's going to grow in, in more spaces. But, you know, just the idea that Spotify isn't paying people is absolutely ludicrous. Drake's catalog generates in the, in the ballpark of $110,000 a day. Um, you know, like I said, who knows how much of that Drake's actually making. Uh, a really crazy example was uh, XXX Tentacion because uh, he had a deal, a distribution deal with Empire, which traditionally they, they only keep about 15%. So that means he was making, keeping 85% on somewhere in the ballpark. Let's, let's see, even posthumous, he's probably, his catalog is probably just bonkers. Uh, posthumously, yeah, he's doing 11 million streams a day. So if he was still alive, and this is just on Spotify, if he, if he was still alive, he would be making $47,000 a day on Spotify. After an Empire cut, um, that would leave 40000 in his pocket. After a manager, that would leave another 36, that would be 36 in his pocket. Let's just say he paid out half of that to producers you know, he's making 18 grand every day on Spotify. And that's not factoring Apple Music. That's crazy. And that's crazy. And, and you know, and Mowgli, somebody might be watching this and be like, well, that's easy for the, the bigger artists to get those numbers. Yeah. What about the, the independent artists, the CHH artists that are trying to make a foothold in the game? How can they be able to capitalize, like, like you have, capitalize on the licensing and the streaming to create income for themselves well so i think first i want to address like how when people are like oh yeah that only works if you're at the very top well i mean like that is the nature of music business or anything in creative like there are over there are over two million people that have that there are over two million artists on spotify right yeah. Um, let, let, let me let me use uh, my bro what up rg for an example because what up like rg's popping right now um, as poppin' as RG is right now, according to chartmetric.com, there are 21,098 artists more popular than RG on Spotify. Wow. 21,000 people that most people probably haven't heard of that are making like a, a healthy living on Spotify. And it, like I said, it depends on who owns the music because ownership is really, really crazy because like, you know, uh, Reach owns a lot of RG's music, so that takes a big cut. And then let's say, let's let's imagine you're a band now, you know. So uh, if 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 you're a band and you're signed to a major label, let's say you're you're getting two million streams a day, which is like pretty crazy, right? 
yeah. like there's there's like hardly anybody in Christian hip hop. I don't think anybody other than like NF, which I put that in quotes because I don't think he's really in the community like that. Um, so so you know if you're generating two million streams a day, that's eight thousand dollars. But let's say you're on a record label and you only get to keep fifteen percent. So out of that eight thousand, you only get to keep twelve hundred. Um, and then you got to pay your manager. Let's say that they're, they're, they're getting paid 10%. So now that 1200 is down to 1080. Let, and let's say your producer has a 15% cut of the record. So you only get to keep 85% of that. So that's $918 a day. And let's say there's five people on the band. So you got to split that five ways. And now that $8,000 is gone to $183 per band member. Wow. And all of a sudden that 2 million streams a day is like puts you in mostly the iceberg ballpark where yeah. the difference is, is that I just own everything. You know what I'm saying? So like the variables can be like really, really wild depending on like what your ownership situation is. And I think that's the biggest thing for me that I just want artists to understand is like, it doesn't take that much if you just own yourself. And then the cool thing is like Spotify and I mean, it's Spotify way more than Apple music is going to give you so much free exposure. Spotify its algorithms have recommended me to hundreds of thousands of people that otherwise wouldn't have heard my music. Those are all potential fans. And like, you know, I post, I tweeted this today too, you know, like Spotify has a hundred million users. If you can maintain a hundred thousand monthly listeners, that is like a comfy paycheck. If you just own your music, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean like a hundred thousand out of a hundred million is one tenth of 1%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, like yeah. if you compare that to, I mean, the, that's just allowed so many niche markets to flourish in ways that like never could have possibly flourished in like physical distribution or even like by means of like selling your music on iTunes. That just wouldn't have happened. So, um, you know, like I think it's really important to keep a healthy and positive attitude about those things and then use it to be able to set benchmarks that can become actually achievable. I I think that's dope. I think that the, the the you know two more questions and I know I know you gotta go, but I yeah yeah I feel like I feel like with our niche market, if we as a community come together, I think people like you and a lot of people can hit those million streams, you know, and get the the 10k listeners. Uh, what do you think to stop in the community? Uh, from coming together and really supporting our artists, and even though streaming does pay, it, it adds up. But what do you think is the the hindering factor of our community just coming together and really supporting people and streaming tip? Well, so I think I think specifically with CHH, CHH originally took took a hit with streaming because people are really really supportive in our space. Like people are much more supportive per capita than in mainstream hip hop or really like just about any other genre of music. So when you have pe like people that are that supportive, they were like way like back when it was like digital uh sales on itunes people were way more likely to buy an album you know like fans were way more likely to support the artist by buying an album and like that like you know so if there if there's like a base of a million people worldwide that like really mess with christian hip-hop there's going to be a lot more money with that million people all buying an album than a million people streaming gotcha if that makes sense. So makes like, sense. so, so, you know, streaming, you do need kind of an economy of scale, which, which I mean, like, it's great if you can have like a healthy niche, but at some point you, you do still need like the mass numbers. So, um, so some niches that just aren't as popular are going to suffer more inherently. And that's kind of what, that is one of the downsides of streaming as opposed to buying. But I mean, I, I think that the, the big thing that Christian hip hop, needs less than even the streaming support because i think especially artists that have developed their sound more are able to cross over and get a lot of algorithmic and playlisting support from like more mainstream uh audiences as well um but i think the thing that's really missing in christian hip-hop is like the live side of it um that's where the the community can help the most supporting artists especially smaller artists especially independent artists is by like buying merch and and going to a show um because that that is like the biggest like uh roadblock i think to a lot a lot of people being able to take their music full-time um because i mean th there's just like uh 
th there's a lot of opportunities that might present themselves in like mainstream hip hop that just inherently don't exist in Christian hip hop as much. Like, you know, like you have a rapper that starts to get buzz in mainstream and you, you might have a bar or a nightclub, like pay them to just like come out and drink with and party with everybody. That's not going to happen in Christian hip hop. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. <laughs> um, now the, the balance to that is that Christian hip hop does have churches, which is like a, a, a disproportionately, non-market-based soft ticket uh event that's like really equitable um but i mean at the end of the day i think the artists uh just have to create good content and just uh be themselves and like i'm, I'm becoming much more and more of a believer that like if you just continue to make good content consistently eventually people are going to recognize it and that that sounds like kind of lame for people that want like a really like fast and easy cheat code type answer. But I think that's like the only consistent thing that I can like really just bank on is that if you just make authentically good content consistently, like more than likely, eventually people will, will start to notice. And, and, and that, that's totally true. Mowgli. And you, and you're the big example for that, you know, like you consistently make music. People have noticed you make a, a pretty good, comfortable um income I, I don't want to say living because i don't know how much you make off music but I, I'm, yeah, pretty yeah. Sure you, I'm pretty sure you make you make you know i, I, I make uh, and I, was like, I, I make enough to pay my bills i don't make enough to live comfortably you know hey, so like that, like and i'll just say like right now like i've been make i've been just doing music full-time for a while now but i'm about to start another another job that's a, a really great paying job that's gonna broaden a lot of opportunities in a lot of other ways and I think that's going to uh, really help just like the art output and everything as well. Um, but, you know, it's a different mix for everybody. And, you know, if I was on a label doing my exact same streams, I, I wouldn't be making anything, gotcha. you know, and that's something that people, people really have to keep in mind. You know? So like, if I signed a deal that allowed me, and it was like a great deal and it allowed me to keep 20%, then that label would have to multiply my platform five fold for me to just break even mm. you know what i'm saying so like even if, if i signed a deal and they tripled my platform but i'm only making 20 percent, you know i would have been better off just staying independent absolutely absolutely you know and, and i think that, and i think that's one thing i wrote about that too i, I think that's one thing that artists need to understand like look you, you're fine where you at and a lot of people have this uh this um uh, illusion that if you could only do it full time, that you know your base would grow and opportunities would happen, and you can make a crazy amount of money. Like you said, you make enough to pay your bills. I mean, that's pretty much like almost like a desk job or a job in, in general, where you make enough to pay your bills, but you don't have enough of a return. And sometimes you need that extra income to help you along the way. So I, yeah, and I mean, it's just different for everybody, you know. And like depending on where you're at in life or where your goals are at, you know. Um, you know, for me, I know that living you know month to month is really stressful and that can be like a really uh that can be rough like for like mental health and just like stress isn't good for you <laughs> you know oh, what yeah, i'm saying absolutely, absolutely. so th there, there is it's definitely good to be in a position where you can have surplus but you know if that's if that requires you just working your entire life away to where like you can't spend time to the things you're called to or the things you're passionate that's not worth it either so you know it's different for everybody but you know I, like i just i advise people to just like uh not be ashamed of doing whatever it is makes sense for you and like it's not a contest man like um if and, and that's the thing like if especially as christians like if you feel god is calling you to make music like that's gonna look like what it looks like for you you know what i'm saying like that god, god might not be calling you to be andy minio or lecrae or nf or any of those people but like if you really feel that like that's your calling you're cool you should be cool with it you know absolutely and and that's and that's awesome and I, i'm and i'm thank you for allowing to speak that because we don't hear a lot of honesty when it comes to these interviews a lot of times it's like hey brother you know keep strong but you know i'm saying do this do that ah you know and you should arrive here but the honesty i, I love it so so Mowgli, man uh, what's next in 2019? You got anything coming up your sleeve in 2019? Well, I mean, I'm hoping to have another project coming out by the end of the year. We got some Indie Tribe stuff that's uh, just in the progress. Um, man, I mean, honestly, I have like the next like two projects kind of like planned out for myself. Um, 
So, I mean, it, there, there's a lot of content on the way. And, um, I mean, just try to set at the same time, just kind of taking it month by month and seeing how things go. Um, not being married to, like, any long-term idea, like, allows for a lot of freedom for me. Um, you know, I like to plan a lot, but I also like to be flexible and just take what's given to me. So, um, we'll see. I'm, I'm definitely excited, though. And, and Mowgli, uh, for people to find you on social media, list your social media so that people can find you. Yeah, it's uh, Mowgli the Iceberg, M-O-G-L-I-T-H-G, I-C-E-B-U-R-G. Um, yeah, on everything. So <laughs> if you if you type in Mowgli the Iceberg, I guarantee you only one thing is gonna come up. <laughs> absolutely, hey, hey, absolutely, and 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 that's an SEO and and search yep. opposite. That's important, but it, we, we, that's another conversation for another day. But again, it's the entertainer, the motivator, the educator, Lecky Murray. I'm here with Mowgli the Iceberg, just dropping gems. Appreciate <laughs> pop now, man. This has been awesome, brother. So, so guys, uh, we will see y'all next time. Sounds good. Thanks for having me on, Lucky. Thank you. Thank you. All right, see you, man.